Good morning and welcome to Wake Up in the Word. It is Thankful Thursday and, and you know, like you guys know, sorry, I'm, I'm slowly percolating, guys. So if you're coming in live, type of one, let us know that you're here. And if you're coming on the replay, hashtag replay. We've got some phenomenal, some some phenomenal people coming in. A very awesome couple. I've been I've been knowing them for the whole time of five minutes, and just <laughs> in that five minutes, we've had some great conversation. And so we have Terry and David Dryden that's coming on the show. And so I'm going to kick us off in prayer. And I just want to welcome everyone who's coming in on Periscope and on YouTube and everyone that's here. We're so thankful for you guys. I'm going to open us up in prayer, but we're going to dive right back into the conversation about marriage and how to keep it strengthened and how to go because this couple has been married for 34 years. So there's a whole lot of wisdom jam-packed in the next 30 minutes. So with that being said, I'm going to shut my mouth. I'm going to let the Holy Spirit move and then Jens is going to kick us off. All right. So Father, we just thank you this morning. Father, we thank you for what you are doing in this atmosphere. Father, I thank you for this broadcast. I thank you that we are able to wake up in the word every single morning and know that you are showing up before we do. And so, Father, right now, as we're talking about marriage this month, we pray right now that you would bless Dave and Terry as they speak. Let their words be from heaven. Let them be from you, Father. Let them be everything that you want to be able to express this morning. And so as, as our viewers are coming in, the community of believers are coming in, they're ready to hear more and more about marriage because we really truly don't have it all together. Not one of us have it all together. And so Father, as a community, we can come together with the Holy Spirit and strengthen our lives individually and corporately. And so Father, we speak that into the atmosphere and we give you all the glory and honor in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. No, I'm telling you, I am so, so excited about having this couple on because, you know, there are there are people that you meet in your life and you just say, wow, they've got a godly marriage. And, you know, having a godly marriage doesn't mean you have a perfect marriage. But I told them from the outside looking in, it looks pretty darn perfect to me. But they've got this incredible love between the two of them. And this example that they show, they're always serving. And when we decided that we were going to go deep the whole month in October talking about marriage, I said, we got to have David and Terry Dryden on. So they've been married for 34 years. They're amazing people. And they're just going to jump on and share with us, you know, when they made the decision to have a godly marriage how that transpired, what they do, how they nurture their marriage and, you know, being the example for their family. They've got two adult children and some beautiful grandchildren. So without further ado, we're going to be poured into Terry and David. Come on up. And thank you for being here. Good morning. Um. How do you want to start? I don't know. I guess we just kind of jump right into it. First of all, we want to thank you guys for allowing yes. us to share some of our testimony with y'all. We, we enjoy doing it. <clears throat> the goal is not to, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, focus on us, but to uh, just share some things that we've had to go through to get to where we are. And we still got a long ways to go, too. And really just hopefully strengthen everyone else's marriage and really uh, the understanding of marriage and what it takes to stay uh, married for for as long as you live, basically. So with that, we can. I'll let Terry kind of jump in. She's well. This morning, um, first of all, we spend time in the Word every morning, so that's probably number one suggestion. Is we go into prayer. I have a prayer. I literally go in my closet. Um, <laughs> And I'll explain why here I do. <laughs> um, I do two devotions, and then I'm I'm in the Bible. But this morning, I thought this was awesome, and I just wanted to share in James one two through four. It says, "Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work, so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything." Mm -hmm. And uh, we've had. Our faith is from a lot of trials, um, and so I don't know if you want to start from the beginning. Or <clears throat> yeah, we'll just hit some highlights. We we met 
36 years ago, actually, and uh, at, a, at a place up in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, of all places. And we just kind of fell in like. And, and uh, the backstory is I was probably um, dating uh, a handful of. Probably uh, three. <laughs> Yeah, uh, of, of, of girls. And uh, Terry was actually... Uh, Engaged to somebody else. Yeah. So, so we, I don't the, know which one was worse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we were not... Um, <clears throat> we really weren't believers at the time. We knew there was a God. We were kind of churchgoers uh, because that's what you're supposed to do. But we didn't go very often. Uh, we went for our wedding and it's <clears throat> that, that wasn't totally it. But so anyway, so we weren't... We didn't jump into marriage with a, a faith that we have now or anywhere close to it. In fact, we didn't have a faith and we had never accepted Christ as our Savior. So that was a start off and we kind of jumped right into um, living life as we were married. Yes. And maybe is the best way to put it. So we started off kind of on the wrong foot, mm -hmm. uh, but I know God was there the whole time. Mm -hmm. uh, after a couple of years, we got married. And there was a lot of crazy stuff we did in between now and then. I was in the bond business. I was kind of a crazy, you know, bond broker. You've probably seen the movies. And uh, that atmosphere was not conducive uh, for uh, a person who doesn't have a foundation to live a godly life. And so we, I did a lot of crazy things, <clears throat> as, as most young men will, or not all, but most young men will. And, and that wasn't good and even led some Terry into some of that. But uh, we had uh, done our share of drinking and and some other things also uh, to a significant degree and, and uh, got married uh, in 86, bought a house in 86. I was kind of in and out of jobs. I was kind of a job hopper for a while. I didn't really have that aspect um, down. I had successfully squeezed 60 hours into four years of college. Think about that for a second, and <clears throat> went out and, and and kind of went into sales and marketing for for many years. And again, did not have a foundation with God. I, I, again, I did go to a major denominational church. It was a good church, and but I just I wasn't there. Uh, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, so the first five years of our marriage um, was not good. So um, it was. Uh, you know, just a lot of strife, a lot of trials, um, uh, just a lot of partying, um, just things that can get you into trouble. <laughs> and so um, I, uh, I was in an area where I was not happy and I wanted to get divorced because uh, David was just, I was the stable one at the yeah. time. And so financially I, I held the family together and um, I just didn't want to do it anymore. I wanted someone to take care of me. I wanted a stable person to have life with, but I felt like everything was on my shoulders. So the first five years was not good. And um, we call 1990 the year from hell. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, you wanted? Well, well, uh, I guess further deeper explanation. Yeah, I, I continued to job hop for a while. Um, Terry did have the stable position in, in the uh, in the family as that role. Um, we had gotten to a point in 1991 where we had uh, sold. We moved from Houston to up here to the Dallas Fort Worth area. Uh, sold our house down there because of some um, mistakes I made and the IRS catching up with me. We didn't get to share a lot much of the profit on selling that house down in in uh, in Houston, which was kind of a rough thing. <laughs> didn't go well for the marriage. Uh, lived in an apartment for a year here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And that's kind of when, uh, around that point, things began to continue to unravel. Uh, she was wanting to leave. I wasn't being the guy I should have been. And that's just, you just have, sometimes you just have to look at yourself in the mirror and go, yeah, you, you got some pimples, man. <laughs> so uh, it, it, it's, you have to be uh, self-evident and you have to understand who you are. And I was beginning to get there because I could see the marriage unravel. Mm -hmm. uh, my brother passed away that year, uh, which was not a blessing, but as the word says, God says he can take anything and make good of it. Uh, through that uh, horrible situation, because he was 25 years old, it was a tragic accident. 
Uh, Terry had gone through a similar situation with her, her sister, so she knew what I was going through. So it, it kind of, that moment kind of stuck us together or made her um, stick around or- More compassionate. More compassionate, <laughs> maybe a good word. <clears throat> and so from that point forward, things actually started getting better. Uh, well, not immediately, but, but- And honestly, even though we didn't <clears throat> have a relationship with, um, with the Lord, I, I did pray and I was like, Lord, if you want me to stay together in this marriage, then I, I need a sign from you because right now I, I don't know what to do. And I, I can't leave him now because I know what it's like to lose a sibling and it's awful. And I, I can't do that to him. I can't. So Lord, just give me some signs that we're supposed to. And in the meantime, those first five years, we were trying to have children oh, yeah. and um, I couldn't get pregnant. And so we did you know, all the fertility drugs, surgeries, doctors, we spent a fortune trying to have kids and that was stressful. And that's back when it wasn't covered by insurance. Yeah. And so, um, so I'm asking for a sign. And so go ahead. You, you, well, yeah, that, then that's, that kind of leads you into you, you have not because you ask not. So you, she, she knew enough to ask and to go to the higher authority, uh, for wisdom in this scenario. And, um, I, I guess and it, it's it's like y'all said it's not one thing typically that brings make, make makes things happen it's a multiple it's a number of things in this scenario this situation I found a, a good full-time job I'd, I'd uh, had to swallow my pride and get out of the uh, the hiatus of being a big fancy stockbroker or bond broker which by title only <laughs> I wasn't super successful and uh, so I just got a steady job in sales and things kind of started to gel a little bit more uh regular income the insurance etc 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 we we, had, we were able to buy a house uh there in uh carrollton texas a modest house was what we could uh, we could do that was a nice home and um i was still continuing some of my antics with uh uh drinking and and probably going to places i shouldn't go uh, in the meantime uh, Things were gelling as far as that goes, as far as uh, um, more financial stability, which made her, she, I remember the word, I think, safe. She wanted to feel safe. Stable. I didn't, stable. She yeah. didn't, and I didn't understand at the time, but it was slowly starting to make sense. I could see the stress begin to, to um, leave her a little bit. Now, I understand we still weren't really in church regularly. Mm -hmm. um, Terry had a calling. Uh, before me, and she started. We started looking. We agreed to, she, to start looking at churches, and she started going, and and I sometimes went, <laughs> and uh, so she found a a, uh, a spirit filled denominational church in in, uh, in the area, and started going, and she wanted me to go, and I was used to your just your good old go and stand and sing hymns and and type of church. Nothing wrong with that. It's great. You know, I mean, getting to church is fantastic. And she took me to it. And I'm, I'm like, well, these people are weird. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but, but she knew, and you can explain the relationship. That well, you, you I felt. just, I would go and, um, I, I was feeling the Holy Spirit, but I didn't know what that was. Yes. And so I would just <clears throat> go and cry and cry and cry. And, um, and just come out. I, I was like, you know, and people were raising their hands and it was, it was wild. But I was like, I don't know what, but I love this. And so I would come home and I would go by myself for a, a long time. And um, how many, there. how many years, how many years into the marriage are we? Cause I, I'm, I mean, I'm telling you, I'm loving this story because I'm like, you just keep going, <laughs> keep going. Uh, this was probably seven years. Yeah, six, seven years in that ballpark. We yeah. Okay. It was 92. All right, so seven, seven years <clears throat> in. Yeah. And so um, I would just come home and I didn't force him. I, um, I would just go. And I think what made the difference is he saw a change in me. And um, I, I never said, I want you to go with me. I, you know, I would just go. And if he came, he came. If he didn't, I, it was just never, um, I could never feel like, I, you know, you can't force anyone to have that relationship. It's just going to have to grow. And so, um, so anyway, the funny story is 
the pastors came, Pastor Paul, you'll get a <laughs> kick out of this. The pastors came to the door um, and David was out partying where places where he probably shouldn't be. And, um, and they came to the door at night and uh, they were knocking the door and they said, can we come in? And I was like, by myself. And uh, I was like, no, no. And he's like, we have bread. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so they came in and um, shared the gospel. You know, I shared my story uh, about my sister. She was, she died in a car accident. It was really horrible. And um, they prayed with me. I accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior in that meeting. It was two men and me. And then I was mad at David because he was out <laughs> partying. Um, he didn't get home till like two in the morning. Yeah. And here I had accepted Jesus, you know, which I, you know, I understood, but I didn't. And so it was just kind of a funny scenario. Right. But, um, <clears throat> important. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. Allergy season in North Texas. Um, so I think there was there was the beginning of the turn. <clears throat> God had entered our house finally. <clears throat> Sorry about that. And um, so I started going to church uh, just through the, that series of events over time. And and the the music was really spirit filled and going and lively. And I I thought that was kind of crazy, but I, I enjoyed listening to the pastor. He was a great pastor. And so the word of God was really coming into me and the way he preached made a lot of sense to me. So I was, I was starting to embrace more and more and more over time. Mm -hmm. uh, there came an event and, and, and kind of backtracking a little bit. Uh, we said we were still not unable to get pregnant. I, well, she was, <laughs> I was unable to help for some reason. And um, we had begun adoption procedures just just the very beginning of it we'd contacted a, a uh, an attorney about one of our friends had adopted some children from Colombia Colombia and so we just kind of contacted and just started so, okay <clears throat> we'll adopt because we want children we wanted children we wanted to have kids and it just wasn't working out uh, fully willing and able to do it and so I remember uh, uh, let's see I remember just saying, okay, Lord, and I, at this point, I guess through that process, because you don't remember all the details, I don't. <clears throat> I remember literally getting on my knees. I know exactly where I was in the living room when I did it. <clears throat> I just said, Lord, look, we'll adopt if you want, but <clears throat> if you want me, which is kind of, you know, we're kind of done when we pray in the beginning, if you want me. Of course, of course he did. <laughs> uh I want Terry to have her own biological child by me. And um, <clears throat> I think you know, that, that and just, while I'm asking, and, I, yeah, while I'm asking, I, <clears throat> I want a girl. If I'm asking, I want a girl too. So I was kind of getting kind of uh, demanding, <laughs> <laughs> demanding of her father. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and about six weeks later, Terry was on a uh, business, trip. business trip down to South Texas. Uh, of course, she. That's back when that big mall in San Marcos was open, the big mall. She she can't drive by that. The car just kind of automatically goes in there. <laughs> Jen, you, you I know. understand. I understand. <laughs> uh, so she came back. She said, I got a couple gifts for you. I said, okay, cool. So she got me a really nice new coach brief uh, briefcase <laughs> from the coach outlet down there. <clears throat> and the second thing she had me was a pregnancy test. That was positive. That's where I get choked up. And... Uh, it was positive. <laughs> and that was, uh, that was six weeks um, <clears throat> after I prayed and she was six weeks pregnant. Oh, wow. You know, I mean, what's so awesome is when you said seven years into it, the God had entered our home. And, um, you know, when you said that, I just thought, you know, how powerful, because how many marriages right now, they just haven't had God enter their home yet because they haven't asked him in because they just haven't got to that point yet. You know, it's like you can't give up, but you can't give up. And then you get on your knee what, that the power of a, a son of God 
getting on his knees and asking his father with faith and with hope and even just with conviction and courage and obedience for exactly what you want and knowing that that's what you got. And they did get the girl. <laughs> and, um, what I wanted to add is um, from that point on, we were so thankful yeah. to be pregnant um, that when Shelby was born, um, we decided we wanted to give back. Um, and we started teaching kids in the, from the very beginning. So we've been teaching since 1991. We've been teaching a, a <coughs> Sunday school class or community group or whatever <coughs> since then. And um, the funny thing is we didn't know any of the Bible stories. So no. we started with four-year-olds because they would give you the curriculum. And so we learned all the Bible stories from teaching. <laughs> yeah, from teaching the, the and, kids and books. And these four-year-olds would, <clears throat> would correct us when we would pronounce the words wrong. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we were. We had those old Hebrew names, a little tough to pronounce in the beginning. And, but the kids had been there in, in church yeah. longer than us. It was cute. So we got, we got corrected. By, we got schooled <laughs> by kids. Yes. You yes. know, um, I, I love it that you you talk about doing service together because last Friday we had a couple on and one of their advices for to have a strong godly marriage is find something that you can serve doing together. Yeah. So I love it that y'all just said, we're so grateful. We want to give back. We want to do something. Yes. And um, that's, that's probably the key to um, our health our finances, everything is, um, we started tithing and, um, it changed our yeah. whole world as far as finances. Um, David's career just took off and multiplied by probably seven as far as income. Um, we are, you know, we write in a grateful journal every day, every morning. Um, but I think the key to our finances is we started tithing yeah. and you know, a lot of people <clears throat> might disagree with that, but that's what worked for our family. Um, and we tithing are, with joy. Yeah. And so, um, yeah. and then as far as, um, and we, we've, we've just been teaching ever since. Yeah, so. We taught, uh, like we said, beginning four year olds and <laughs> we, we worked our way up the rank all the way to teenagers. Uh, and so we were, we were in the high school ministry doing doing that. And that, that was hard on the older couple because of the all night parties yeah. that they have and the lock in. They were like, oh my gosh. <laughs> but yeah. so then we got demoted uh, to adults. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we did that for a few, a handful of years. I forget how many. Probably 10, 10 years. Before we left the church, <clears throat> we came back, came, we moved to a different area. We moved to a different city. That's why we left. But. One of the big things in our marriage, and really, I, to, I won't say recently, but I don't know what, maybe five, six years ago, uh, Terry Hip was really kind of the lead person in making sure we went to church. I was still going and still believing. And, you know, I was, I was in there, I was in men's groups, but she was kind of the driving force uh, in our, uh, in our spiritual life, if you will. But, but not, uh, I never made you go. No, no, she never I, made me. She just, I just prayed. I prayed. Um, you know, you just, I don't, everything that we've dealt with, we've prayed about. It's not like, um, yeah. even with our kids, it's like, we didn't make them go to church, but they saw us go. And so, um, and they continue both of them to go to church and their kids are going to church. Right. And so, but it was never like you <clears throat> going, um, we just was the example. And so, um, <sighs> Leading up to um, to that point, I guess, like I said, she was um, she was still the I would say stronger personality in the uh, in the marriage. Yeah. But it was it was a little bit because she had to be because I wasn't the disciplinary and I wasn't a good one. Uh, anyway, uh, she really took the lead role in in the finances and paying the bills and stuff like that. I was still making money and doing fine and all that kind of stuff, but. She was kind of the lead role in that. <clears throat> and it was a scenario where she was, um, I hate to say she was wearing her pants, but a lot of times, she, in a lot of areas, she was. Mm -hmm. And it was starting to cause friction 
a little bit with the discipline of the kids uh, because she was always the bad guy and I was always always trying to make peace and be the good guy and there's nothing wrong with making peace uh, but um, the way it should run is that I should be more the disciplinarian and I should be taking lead role in a, in a number of areas so that was beginning to cause a significant amount of uh, friction in our life with arguments with and, teenagers and with teenagers and stuff yeah yeah, our house was very busy at that time because, you know, the, the the high school football, the high school drill team, all the stuff that you go through, uh, life was really busy. And it got to a point to where it was an issue mm -hmm. and it was starting to bubble up to the surface. And so there was a, a gentleman, um, a pastor, John Aldridge, who would come to our house for our women's Bible study. And um, I studied under him for like 10 years and he was amazing and i would go to him for ministry and that's another key is when there's struggle um i you know i knew i knew i was controlling and david was passive aggressive and so we would we went uh together for a year for ministry on how how to let go i had to let go david had to pick up and um and each part was just as hard i mean yeah. i had I had to step up my game, basically, and, and be who God wants me to be in a, in a, uh, as a father and as a, as a husband. So uh, gradually the trust was there that I could release it because mm -hmm. he would pick it up. And that was uh, a turning point in our, in our marriage as far as okay, <clears throat> I, I trusted him to handle the finances. I trusted him to do the discipline. Um, I trusted him. I had faith in him to um, pick up what I was trying to handle. And it was hard. It's hard when it's on one person. And it's amazing. <clears throat> Once we've gotten through that, when I see other marriages who are having problems, how common this problem is mm -hmm. where uh, mama or, or the wife, whoever is really more the controlling spirit. And it may not because in my opinion, in a lot of times, it's not because they necessarily, that's their personality. It's because they have to, because hubby's not doing what he's mm -hmm. supposed to be doing. So someone has to do it. So she has to step in and then she gets kind of um, stressed, stressed at it <laughs> and, and, and resentful a little bit because she's having to do the heavy lifting when it comes to some of the things we just talked about. And that does cause issues. And we see that as a it's unusually common problem in marriage mm -hmm. these days where, yeah, where husband is not being uh, who he's supposed to be uh, as a godly father and a godly, uh, godly husband. And you know, and I'll tell you, Terry, you said it just right. It's trust. And you said it exactly right too, David, where it's, it's not that that's what they're, they really want, but they know it's got to get done and they don't trust that the, that the husband is going to do it and they know it's got to get done. Right. You know, we had, we had Doug and Amy Roberts on last Thursday and there, there was that going on. And, and I know for myself and a lot of, of marriages, you know, and for it, it, it's crazy because, you know, God made women a certain way with certain strengths and he made men a certain way with certain strengths and when the wires get crossed, like you said, David, you know, we got to do it because we got to do it because it's got to get done. But like Terry said, it's stressful because that's not, you know, God didn't equip women with with everything. You know, we're more nurturing. We're more, you know, but if we have to do it, we will. But, you know, you only have so much energy. Mm -hmm. And if if extra energy is going here, then you don't have the other energy to do what you need to do, which is typically nurture your spouse. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, and so you're not nurturing your spouse. You're mad at your spouse. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing, too, is um, for those that have teenagers or young adults, um, I, I don't know if anyone knows the author Stormy Omardian, but. I share this book with everyone because it's called The Power of Praying for Your Adult Children. And if you see, it is dog-eared, ripped, <coughs> highlighted. I mean, 
it is worn out. But um, sometimes when you have teenagers or you're young adults, um, you don't even know what to pray. I mean, we had a son that was struggling with a lot of things that we did as young adults. Mm -hmm. And, um, and um, you know, we had unconditional love for him. Um, we just loved on him and, but mainly prayed because I didn't know what to do. I was like, you know, you, we had, you know, you kind of get prideful when you're uh, a Christian. <laughs> and um, I was leading moms in prayer for the high school, for the elementary school, for the middle school. And here my son is behind the scenes doing everything that uh, he shouldn't be doing. Yeah. And, you know, you, I, I got this pride where it was like, oh my gosh, I was devastated because I'm like, how, you know, so I didn't know what to do, but pray. Right. And sometimes you don't even know what to pray. And so this book was awesome because there's a, a section in there at the end of each chapter that all you have to do is plug in your child's name. Cause I, you know, I didn't know what to do. I was like, you know, I, and I would just say, Holy spirit, just grab him, please. And, um, he went through a really bad stage and it was for a few years. And, uh, and finally, David said, you know, you have two choices here. You can, what were Basically, I think one the first choice was you can leave your car keys and your phone and, and everything except your clothes here at the house and go live with all those friends who, who you're doing what you're doing with. Uh, you can have someone pick you up and you can make it on your own. That's how you want to live. Or you can make significant changes, whether it be going to a, a Christian college, whether it be going to pastor school, whether it be going back to regular school, because he tried that for about uh, for three or four months. <laughs> and so I said, that's your that's your only two choices, one or the other. You can stay here and we'll support you if you get back on path, <clears throat> or you can go figure it out on your own. And he... He chose well. <laughs> he did. And so, and, and what I wanted to share is since he was two years old, he's had the gift of evangelism. Yeah. He, he wants everyone to know the Lord. And he's, so I believe in my heart that the evil one did not like his gift and uh, was trying to grab him. Well, like he tries to grab all our kids. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I would just continue to pray. And, and, you know, he decided he went to YWAM. It's called Youth with a Mission in Australia. And he went there for almost four years, um, first as a student and then went back as, as a leader. staff leader. And so he took young adults all over third world countries and um, shared the gospel. And yeah, we're um, talking Southeast Asia, I North mean, Africa. He, he turned his life places. around. It, um, and he, you know, he's, he's, loves the lord and he's he does he has a gift of sharing jesus with yeah. everybody but in a excuse me a unique way i'm getting emotional um <laughs> go ahead i don't know if you want to add to that. um so that that was him uh our daughter was betty by the book and but that made it a very strong-willed person to deal with <laughs> so we struggled with her for a while but <clears throat> i think the main thing was on both scenarios with raising kids we were consistent with what they saw of us, okay? What they saw us going to church, say, saw us reading the Bible, saw it. So I was trying to live a godly life. We were both consistent with the rules <clears throat> that we had laid down for them. Um, and we weren't just mean old people. We were, just, we, we were lovingly firm, consistently. And the hard part is doing that over a period of years uh, because you have to. I mean, it's, it's, it's consistent application of of doing everything you have to do to raise your kids. And, and if you don't do it the first time, it's a little harder to get them back after, after they're out of the house. You, it, it's, it's being done. Uh, prayer is the main way to do with that. But, mm -hmm. but so the, that was a big, it wasn't a conflict. It was just a very stressful point in our lives right. is trying to keep our kids on track. And yeah, they're going to wander off and do the thing and explore. And, 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 you know, we did, that's for sure. But, uh, <laughs> It's it's but they've both uh, turned out to be awesome, godly kids. Not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, mm -hmm. but uh, they have really stepped up. And the only thing I can say is, other than obviously God being part of it, is we were just consistent year after year after mm -hmm. year after year. 
and we have fun. Um, yeah, we laugh. We a lot. have a lot of joy. We have a lot of humor. Um, we handle stress with humor um, sometimes. How do you not do it? That and way? so um, they, it's just a fun. It's a fun atmosphere, I think. Yeah, and well, right now, it's a circus fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, well, you, you know, I I've written down ten things that y'all said. You know that has really saved your marriage put your marriage you know made your marriage um, a godly marriage and number one is prayer man prayer 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 you are praying and praying and praying you start your day in prayer you do individual prayer you do prayer together you start in the word you start every day in the word you have a gratitude journal together. You tithe. And what I loved is you said, we joyfully tithe. Mm -hmm. We joyfully tithe. You know, and the thing, the spirit in which you do things matters. The intent um, matters. You keep, you, you are, you have, you're the right example to, you don't force, you have, you, you're loving with your family, with your friends. And you're you have your responsibilities the way the Lord wanted us to be. You serve together. You take your struggles with the Lord, and or if you need outside help, you get spiritual outside help, which I think is so important. And then what you just said, we have joy and humor. I mean, I'm telling you what those ten things you could write a book with those ten things. Um, because that's really the basis in then the great thing I'm reading the book right now, the one thing, mm -hmm. and you know, in the one thing that the author says, when you look at anyone that has success in any area of their life, they did it over time. Yeah. And one of the things that I say personally, and Terry knows is I say success happens in decades, mm -hmm. you know, Good. 10 years minimum of you doing the best you can. And then things will, you'll start to see just things don't happen overnight, but 34 years into it, man, we can see the fruit of, of your labor. And it's been beautiful. Pastor Paul, you got anything you want to drop in here? Absolutely. Number one, we are at 707, so we're going to wrap it up. <laughs> there is no way, shape or form that, that we can get all of this all in 30 minutes. But the one thing, just like Jen said, is prayer. And so when you were talking about the six weeks that you found out that she was pregnant, it goes back to the word in Daniel to where Daniel prayed. And he said, I was praying. And even though there was that delay, the angel of the Lord told him, listen, I heard your, I heard your prayer the first day and I was coming, but I was delayed by the Prince of Persia. And so even in that delay, even in those times, even in that patience uh, moment, that's where prayer is solid. And that's where prayer is key. Prayer is prep period. And so without prayer, there's no foundation that is ever going to be built. And so just like, just like y'all have done, y'all have come together. And I like what you were saying earlier about roles. That's something that people don't want to talk about, about knowing what your role is. It's not putting anyone down. It's not suppressing the woman or the man. It's, it's understanding that there are roles that we have and it's not always financial. It's all about being the spiritual leader. It's all about being submissive both to one another, both to Christ. And that's where the church lacks is because we don't want to talk about roles. We don't want to talk about that. Well, no, we're together. No, there's a role, period. There's a role. Men, come on, go work on the car. <laughs> go change that oil. Go cut that lawn. Now, my wife, she loves to do the lawn, so I leave it alone. But when it comes to blowing the leaves, when it comes to painting, when it comes to all of that stuff, I'll jump in. And so we have to understand the roles, right? And so we want you back because you have so much wisdom in this. I would love to see you guys back within this month. And I'm sure Jen's has already told you guys that. But thank you so much for coming in because this was this was awesome. 34 years of trials and 
and tribulation and look at where you're at now. Your son's doing ministry. Um, the Lord led uh, Dave by the Holy Spirit. It's by the Holy Spirit that we're called. And just watching his wife, the praying wife, and, and watching this thing and, and, and finally surrendering, that's what it's all about. It's about, just like the scripture, with all humility. So when you're humble, you surrender. You want to surrender to God. You want to surrender to those things, right? And so thank you so much for coming in. Jens is going to pray us out, or if you guys can pray us out, that would be awesome. Um, so guys, this was this was awesome. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure meeting y'all. I'm going to step out the way, and I'm going to let you guys pray us out. Thank you. All right. All right. Father, we love you. We praise you. We give you glory upon glory. We call you King of Kings, Lord of Lords, God of Gods, holy in the highest. Father, we come to you, uh, and it says we're two or more gathered together. You are in our, midst, in our midst, so I know that you are here with us. Father, we just ask that our very humble words of experience uh, by your Holy Spirit <clears throat> uh, reach the right ears and the right heart, and we plant some seeds in fertile soil that uh, marriages would begin or continue to be healed uh, to get better in every aspect where they are where we take back over this country, this world, uh, and where it's gone uh, at home uh, where it begins. And so, Father, we just pray that uh, everyone would learn more and more about going to you, Father God, with their needs, their wants, their desires, the desires of their heart. Pray that you would uh, just bless them immensely. And we hope and pray and are very thankful that we can maybe play a small part in this. And Father, thank you for there for, for um, y'all that you're doing this, that you're out reaching people who, who need help. And Father, we know that that will be blessed and marriages will be blessed. Uh, so we thank you. And we thank you for the opportunity in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. <laughs>